Today's podcast, we had Mark Pattison on, who is out of San Diego, California. He's a realtor with the biggest team out there. They're on pace to do over 800 transactions in San Diego alone. They have done some amazing things. And the crazy part is Mark just started real estate five years ago. You don't want to miss out. He talks a lot about team building. He talks about culture and just building this environment that cultivates, you know, top performers. And it was something that I really resonated with knowing that my companies are built in a very similar way. And uh, I love his competitive nature and all the things he's talking about, always trying to push forward to the next level. So make sure you stay to the end. Now, let's jump into it. Are you looking to grow your real estate investing business? My company, Future Flipper, can help. We've taught hundreds of people all over the country how to flip, wholesale, and buy rental properties. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your investing journey. Whether you're trying to get your first deal or scale your company, Future Flipper can help. We have courses, coaching, and events for all levels of investors. So if you want to take the next step, go to futureflipper.com and book a free consultation to see how we can best help you. Once again, that's futureflipper.com. If you've ever wanted to invest with me on my real estate deals, it's now possible. At Pineda Capital, we're purchasing value-add real estate all across the country. This includes multifamily, commercial, and land development. The best part is with my network, social media presence, and marketing strategies, we're able to get the very best deals that others don't have access to. You can join in with me on those deals if you're an accredited investor. If you want to learn more, head over to PinedaCapital.com to see our current opportunities. Once again, that's PinedaCapital.com. Welcome to The Ryan Pineda Show. Where our mission is to invest. I only expect to make money in things that I understand. Innovate. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And inspire. I am much more likely to hit my goal just due to putting it out there. Now rocking with the best. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Ryan Pineda Show. Today, we've got ourselves a realtor. We don't interview realtors too often, but when this man reached out to me, and told me a little bit about what he was doing. I said, I want to talk to him for my own benefit. I want to learn from this guy. Just some quick facts about our guest, Mark, today. They are on pace to do over 800 transactions this year. Yes. 800. The team's yep. going to do over 800 in San Diego, which is not an easy market by any means. Um, he's only been at this for a little over five years. You know, he was telling me earlier he was riding a moped and $70,000 <laughs> in credit card debt. And now, you know, to 800 transactions, the top team in SoCal to over $10 million in gross commissions to who else knows whatever you're up to. We'll find out. But, uh, man, super inspiring. Happy to have, uh, Mark Pattison on the show today, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Definitely. Uh, it's, it's exciting to be here. Fun to be in Vegas. Yeah. So tell me like, how did you get to where you're at, man? Man, it's a, uh, if I look back and I had to start over again, I don't know if I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't know how I got here so quickly, but it's really learning from others. So I went and I just looked at people who were doing it better than I was doing it and said, Hey, can I come shadow you? Can I come out to your office? Let's share ideas truly through coaching and masterminding. I think that's been able to how I got there. Yeah. So to take a step back real quick, I mean, you told me you're 36, right? Yes. Young dude. I'm 32. You know, I think in the last five years, both of us have really grown like crazy um, but taking very drastically different paths. You know, I went down the real estate investment path. You went down the broker path. And I mean, with what you were telling me, you've built your team into and just like all the ancillary ancillary businesses along the way. And um, just like the big goals you have, like, I'm like, man, that's crazy. Because in my mind, when I look at like the realtor side, one reason I didn't want to do it is because for one, I didn't like working with clients. But two... I'm like, man, this is hard to scale. Yeah. You know, because it's just like, I don't know, how, how many houses can one truly sell in like, I don't know, Las Vegas? Yeah. And also hard to find the people. Yeah. The, the talent. Yeah. Very labor intensive being a realtor. But like, what got you to there? Because you, you told me six years ago, you were still just like in Chicago working at the bar. Yep. Like what happened? Yeah. So I was getting closer to 30. Yeah. And I said, uh, I better figure this out. So I, I felt like I, you know, I went to Seattle University. I worked at Microsoft. I worked in Chicago, worked at Groupon. I'd done all these jobs, but I never lasted longer than six months. Mm -hmm. I was always getting bored. So I said, I've got to find a career where I'm constantly challenged, something where I'm always learning. And I 
kind of fell upon real estate. I didn't have a mentor or somebody in my family that was part of it. I just said, I think I'm going to become a real estate agent. Funny thing is I never watched any of the TV shows, didn't know much about it. I didn't know one person in San Diego. I had a moped, so I didn't even have a car. <laughs> and I had a ton of debt because I was always traveling and saying yes to everything, going everywhere. And I was like, man, this seems like I'm a perfectly qualified real estate agent. So <laughs> what I did was uh, got my license. It took about a year when I was there. I was bartending in San Diego as well. And then just kind of like I did really well my first year, started a team after that, and just started training people. Uh, my dad coaches Olympic athletes, so oh. I'm able to maybe train people a little bit better because I grew up around it. I really love empowering others, telling people, you know, if I say you're, if you're not effing up, then you're not trying. You're right. So, you know, if you're always going for it and uh, my done is better than your perfect. So my business is pretty sloppy. It's, it's got a lot of things that I need to fix because I'm constantly analyzing it, but I'm doing it. I'm implementing. Yeah. There's so many people that go to these events or watch these podcasts or, you know, watch on YouTube, but get out there and do it. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. That's one thing I tell people all the time when, uh, you know, I'm trying to help people build businesses is like, look, nobody's going to ever do it as good as you. You got to get over that because, yeah. you know, if, if somebody can do it 80% as good as you and you got a bunch of people at 80%, you're going to have a pretty strong company. For you sure. Know? I don't need one person at 100%. And, uh, you know, I, I've just realized over the years that, like, the more people I hire that are talented and I build them up as leaders and, like you said, I empower them to make mistakes and to, you know, I, and I'm okay with it. It's just led to so many other things and so much more time freedom for me. Yeah. No, it's leverage. Yeah. And then people always say this too. I love how people say, well, how do you find so many good agents? Or how do you find people that are going to be, you know, I just, everyone's lazy around me. I'm like, well, with that mindset, you're never going to find yeah. the right people. So if you're looking to, you know, hire people, create that. I mean, it's kind of weird to like put it in the universe to say like, hey, this is what I want, but you need to have your avatar. You need to know what you're looking for. You need to let other people know what you're looking for. So when I go to hire people, I mean, I've got a list of people that want to come work for me. I'm right. blessed. Like, and I have a fantastic team and they crush it. And the funny thing is, is like in the beginning, yes, they didn't know much, but now my agents hand to hand against me. I bet you they would probably beat me on a listing. They would beat me. <laughs> like now I feel like I'm a fraud. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, how do you know so much about this? But it's great. Like seeing the text threads, we have a Slack channel where everyone can kind of communicate and I'll look and see some of the agents answering. And I'm like, man, my team, I'm like a proud dad. Yeah. Uh, they don't need me anymore. No, they don't need me anymore, which is great. And with leverage, and empowering others, I've been able to step out. I mean, I'm gone for 30 days on vacation and trips. I'm here in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so my team runs itself. It's truly a corporation now. Yeah. No, that's amazing, dude. I, and for anyone listening, I think you got to just realize that there's got to be some kind of end goal, you know? So it's like when you first started being a realtor, I don't know if you had big dreams to have this giant team. Um, I, sh I certainly didn't. I didn't have dreams to like own a business that I didn't work in. It was just like, dude, I'm just trying to flip houses and make money. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to sell some homes and uh, not be broke. Like yep. that's the initial start. And then as you have more success, you're like, man, okay, this is cool. Like uh, I can just keep doing this and make a lot of money or I can figure out how to really grow this. And also while growing it, get my time back by, you know, getting the right people. Yep. And I think when you can see the big picture of it, you know, if you're starting out like, hey, this is like what I want to do and get to a certain level, it makes the path that much like funner and like you're going to be quicker too. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I was going to say, it's just, it's important to know where you want to go because, but the funny thing is, is we even talk about it. Where are you and I going to be in five years? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, like when everyone does the like five year vision, it's great to have an idea, but dude, if you're crushing it, you're going to be so much further than you'll ever think. Yeah. People put these huge goals on one year. And they, they like get mad because they don't accomplish it. It's like, you know, focus on just like your next day. Yeah. Like you can have the idea, but you don't know how it's going to take it. I mean, the market could change, things shift. Yep. Everything's, you know, you don't control everything, but just, I think just, you know, doing your best every day. Then you, you look back, you're like, holy crap. Yeah. No, we're of the same mindset. I can tell you like the reason I, I'm very like, I don't know what's going to happen five years because I look at my life five years ago and I had just made a hundred thousand dollars over a hundred thousand my very first time five years ago same yeah yeah and i look at it today i'm like it's like unfathomable that i would have been able to think about where i am today five years ago it just wouldn't have been realistic yeah um and so now i'm like i don't know where i'll be five years from now it could be something that's just absolutely crazy 
I know it's probably not going to be where I'm, I'm at today, just based on my habits and, you know, my drive to keep getting better. But to your point, I think it just comes down to what are you doing every single day to get better? You know, if you can get better every day, things are going to change pretty quickly. For sure. And I mean, it's, uh, and if you, if you help others, and like I was saying earlier, if you empower others, you're going to rise up. Like, cause you, you have this huge group of people that are just raving for you that to win. Right. And we all have the same mission. We want to be the number one team. We've been striving at it. I mean, I didn't even think I could even catch up to these people. I remember going to my first like team real estate conference. And one of these guys came up to me and was like, do you even have a team, bro? <laughs> and I was like, kind of, <laughs> but in my head, I was working my butt off and I'm like, man, that like dagger to my heart of like, I, I did have a team. It just wasn't very good. Right. I was the team producing and paying for the leads and my agents weren't converting. So it's an uphill battle in the beginning, but anything that you put your head to and you just keep working at it, one day it just clicks. Yeah. And it works. So tell me about the early journey. I mean, you go to San Diego. What, like, how did you even end up in San Diego from Chicago? Yeah, I was sick of cold weather. So born and raised in Seattle. Yeah. And then I moved to Chicago. I don't know why. Uh, it's very, very, very cold there and yeah. hot. Uh, so I said, you know what? I'm going to move to Southern California. Yeah. And I was thinking L.A., so I, and then I, you know, I just thought like the difference between LA and San Diego, I'm much more of a San Diego guy, more chill. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to sit in traffic selling homes. Right. So I moved to San Diego, uh, on the Craigslist ad, my apartment that I was moving into was supposed to be in a neighborhood called North Park. I had been on vacation there. I was like, oh, North Park's a great neighborhood. Ended up going to a neighborhood called City Heights, not North Park. Uh, and then after about a year, you know, getting my license and just just kind of just trucked away. I mean, the first couple of years I was working seven days a week, right? waking up at 5 a.m. every day, seven days a week, waking up at 3.30 some days. Uh, and now it's, it's easy. I don't have to wake up that early anymore. No, no. <laughs> I so, naturally do because I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's weird how that happens. Yes. Um, so the first, you know, those first years, you're solo, I'm assuming, yep. just trying to grind and get deals and figure it out. Like, at what point did you start to have success? I actually sold my first house my first week. Wow. And then I sold the next one the next week. Jeez. And then uh, I started getting success, and I, I Googled. Um, basically, I was like, my office, the number one agent, had sold 24 homes for the year. And I was like, man, that doesn't seem very much. I looked online, and I see these people selling like 400 houses a year. Right. So I signed up for a coaching company and yeah. just spending coaching. So having that coach and the accountability, yeah. and then also it gets you connected to network with the right people. Right. Like I said, I go out and visit offices. I go and shadow my friends and we share leads. We share ideas. We share resources. Plus it's a great referral source. Right. You know, not yeah. everyone's leaving California. There are people moving to San Diego. <laughs> San Diego's a great city. Yeah. Uh, maybe other parts of California. What does Ron Burgundy say? It's the greatest city in the world. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he lived in the neighborhood next to me. There you go. Yeah. In a very like modest neighborhood. <laughs> you know, like I was very shocked when I found out that uh, he lived over there. That's funny. So you, you start off really hot and you just start thinking bigger. You're like, all right, you know, that doesn't seem like that many homes. Yep. And you do a big technique that I always tell people mastermind, right? Start masterminding with other people. Um, in fact, I actually just announced it today. I'm holding my mastermind by the time this, uh, podcast airs, it'll probably be pretty close. There's still maybe tickets left, but, uh, you know, we hold a mastermind every quarter for future flipper and it's where I bring, you know, all my top students together, I bring guest speakers, and they all come to Las Vegas, we network, we mastermind, we exchange ideas, what's working in their market, what's working in my market. And it's just a really good time. And I just know that, like you said, by being able to get around other high level or high level producers, it just makes you think different. Yeah. yeah. It shows it's possible. Yeah. And you're like, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Trust they're me. sitting right in front of me. If I can sell as many houses in San Diego, anyone can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do work hard, but I think that uh, there might be easier ways to do it. But still. You don't feel like you have any extraordinary skills that other people don't. I say thank you to my parents a lot. My parents gave me like a very good foundation, very stable, um, which, you know, maybe a little, you know, maybe a little chaos would create a good agent too. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I just had a really good upbringing. My parents were business owners. Yeah. My dad coached Olympic athletes. What was so, he coaching? Uh, ice speed skating. So actually oh. like Apollo Ono, J.R. Selsky, all those guys came from my dad. Growing wow. up, I had the uh, Russian Olympic team lived with us. <laughs> um, the Korean Olympic team lived with us. Yeah, we always had all these athletes moving to Seattle and living with us That's to train. That's crazy. With my dad, yeah. So why didn't you become a speed skater? 
I have, yeah. It was until, uh, because when you grow up, you basically don't go to high school. You go and live in, a, in like a training facility at a, right. at a, a the Olympic training facility in uh, Park City. Right. And you basically just do that day in, day out. And I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. I didn't really want to do it. Like, I did do roller, I did do roller derby. So I was on the men's roller derby team. What is roller derby? You know, it's like kind of like football, but on skates. Really? Yeah. I've never heard of that. And the is, funny thing is, is like. Is it an Olympic sport? No. It, oh. I, it's freaking tough, though, dude. I was like, oh, I'm a good skater. I can do this. And uh, sure enough, the 300-pound dudes were really good skaters, too. <laughs> so, like, what <laughs> is tiny. it? Is it kind of like, uh, dang, what's the other one that they do in Europe? Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Rugby. Is it like no, rugby? Yeah, kind of. I mean, they have, uh, so it's like, you know, there's, uh, the, basically, you got to lap the group. Uh-huh. And for every person you pass, you get points. Oh. So it's very much a very, and you're basically hitting each other, no pads. You got helmets and like elbow pads, but you know, it's not like football where you're padded up. You can't tackle them? Uh, no, but you can do some like, it's, it's pretty gruesome. Really? I'm yeah. Gonna, I want to watch a YouTube of what roller derby is. Well, my first, <laughs> they call them bouts. My first bout was champs, which is the world they, championships. They call them bouts? <laughs> yes. And the funny thing was, is like the year before, before I even got into it, uh, I ended up, it was in like Paris or something. Yeah. The year I did it, it was in St. Louis. I'm like, why is champs in St. Louis and not Paris? <laughs> yeah. Can we go back to Paris? Yeah. So I, I, the way I ended up into it is I knew how to skate. I volunteered with big brothers and my little brother, uh, he said, Hey, you know how to roller skate. You should do roller derby with me. And he was like a 10 or 11. Uh-huh. I was like, Oh, I'll do roller derby. So I freaking signed up because this little kid convinced me. <laughs> Your little brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah my, that sounds cool. My little, he convinced me to do roller derby. And then, man, that was some tough stuff. But it's funny, like, the alter ego that you kind of create. Like, yeah. it, it is true. Like, it teaches and empowers you to do kind of anything. You're like, if I can freaking do, you know, this sport or if I can bring this on. It's the same thing with, like, Beyonce does Sasha Fierce or she had it. Uh, she, co- she becomes someone different on stage. Right. That's what you got to have if you want to freaking get through it. Because if you want to work seven days a week and you want to do the grind, yeah. You got to have a big reason why. You got to kind of have a crazy alter ego. Yeah. And when you hit the stage, you just got to be ready to go. Yeah. It's like the Black Mambo for Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've seen that for sure. I've seen it when I was playing sports. And I mean, even today, I mean, maybe I don't do it as much anymore, but you know, when I'd first get on camera, I'd be like, all right, it's time to get ready, crack my neck. Like, and then all of a sudden, like, my team will see you out of nowhere. I'm just like, all right, let's do it. Like, you know, you just turn it on. Yeah. And I think you have to do that uh, for whatever you're doing, really. I mean, for sports, you do it. Obviously, if you're an entertainer, you have to bring the energy. Because uh, I'm naturally a pretty chill guy, too. But it's like, yo, on camera, you got to show some more enthusiasm. Yep. So, well, my thing was you'd pull up to a listing or a buyer appointment when you're a new agent. And you're like, I don't know much. And you, I would always say, uh, let go, let God, because you weren't in control. Right. So that's been like, you know, whatever you believe in, your universe, whatever. Just let someone else because you're not that important. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing I always say is like zoom out and look at our problem of selling or buying this house. I sell this, I'll say this to a client and be like, our issue of your home sale is not the biggest issue in the world right now. Yeah. So it's actually very small and we should be grateful that you have a home to sell. Yeah. So I think of it more of like that. And I, you know, I, I lay on my core values. I explain them to my clients and that's like the, the business I've created. It's all based around that. Yeah. And that way you're only working with people that, you know, align with you. Yeah. It's my tribe. Yeah. It's kind of like, what is it, MMA? They said only 2% or something watch MMA. They're like, yeah, but the 2% are really into it. Right. So if you got your tiny percent in your market that's into you, you know, whether you're doing flips and you got your clients or you got your agents, uh, just find your tribe. Yeah. What do you think about that with realtors? This is one thing I've told ours. You know, for those of you who don't know, we've got a brokerage over like 150 agents now here in Vegas. And, you know, I, I tell them all the time, like, hey, guys, you don't want every client right? Like, you know, there's so many clients that'll just throw you for a loop and just drag you along everywhere and, you know, expect the world out of you for all the time, right? It's like, dude, you need to set your standards on what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do and who you want to work with. Like, it's okay to say no to money. (laughs) Yes. More money will be there. There's a lot of money in the world to be had. Yeah. Like, how did you get over that, especially as a new agent, when you're like, man, I got to make money? Uh, when you're brand new, you kind of just do whatever. <laughs> I love when I meet an agent and they're like, my niche is going to be this. And I go, so I have, I have a buyer that has $600,000 cash. It doesn't really fit into your niche. Are you going to take it? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, so you don't have a niche. <laughs> so you're going to take anything you can get right now. Right. Uh, the other day, it was probably actually about six months ago, I was driving down the freeway. I don't actively sell anymore. I just run the company. And this person who I showed like a hundred and something homes to, they yeah. bought a house. 
But a person I showed like a hundred something homes to was next to me on the freeway. Uh-huh. And I was driving and I looked over and I was like, oh crap, I hit the brakes. I was like, I don't want her to see me. Because <laughs> it brought back so many bad memories. Yeah. I was like, man, that was my fault for not future pacing her. It's something I learned later on. Like, I've got to let them know, like, hey, we're going to look at this many homes. You got to figure out. It's, it's all based off of questions. Yeah. If you're not getting the right answer, if you think like buyers or liars is a term real estate agents use, I'm like, buyers aren't liars. You just didn't ask the right questions. You're right. the you're the one that messed up. Yeah. You have got to set the standard and, you know, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it just really comes down to setting the standard. Like, and that's for everything in life. Yeah. Relationships, you know, your spouse, your loved ones, it, you set the standard, you set what's expected. Yeah. And then- no one can get upset if we had the discussion about what was expected and what was, you know, what we both wanted. Right. Yeah. I tell that to my business partners all the time. You know, if I'm looking at doing something, I'll be like, Hey, you know, like, let's just set expectations really quickly here. Not quickly, but like, Hey, who's doing what? Right. Cause for me, I'm much like you. I want to just run the company from the top. I do not want to be in the day to day. Like, here's my role. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's your role. Here's what you're going to do. You know, you're going to be in this way more than me. Yep. But, you know, with this arrangement, we're both going to succeed. It's going to be great. And uh, you got to make sure you're okay with that because I don't want any hurt feelings because somebody thought that there was going to be something different. And it's the same thing we do with all of our products we sell, you know, whether it be taxes or, um, you know, education or anything else. I'm like, hey, here's what it costs. Here's what you're going to get. It's very clearly defined. Here are the risks associated with it, right? Like, you know, and we ain't cheap. Everything yeah. we sell is top of the market um, in terms of like cost compared to other things. And it's like, this is why you're paying top of the market. Here's what you're going to get. But even still, even if you are paying top of the market, it doesn't mean that you get everything in the world that you want. It's just like you have to still set expectations. And I think uh, that's just kind of where realtors fail because it's just like, man, oh man, this guy wants a, a 1% listing. You don't really even have a, a predetermined plan of what you're you're willing to do. Yeah. You got to have that set in place. Yeah. What's your guys' like stance on that? Like where do you guys see the real estate side or the realtor side going, I should say, you know, first the attack was these 1% listing guys, then it was the flat fee brokerages and it was the Zillows and the I buyers. Like what are you seeing? I I mean, I think it is going to change. It's definitely going to have a few key players, I believe. I think the traditional brokerage is going to be kind of a done thing here in probably 10 years. Yeah. It's definitely getting impacted now. And your average agent is going to be cut out because when they're doing these discount things, you got to sell a lot of homes after paying taxes and things like people think you're making a lot of money. Yeah. Like, Hey, my broker got this. My team leader got this. Yep. The realtor.com or Zillow got this from the percentage. Uh, by the time you're done with it, if you're doing flat fees or cutting people out, you won't be around very long. Yeah. And we've seen it. It's been cyclical. There's been companies like that in the eighties, in the nineties, and then they go away and then they come back. Um, I think it's going to be like a few key players and the good agents will survive. Same thing if the market's, you know, tanks or if something were to happen, the good real estate agents will still be here. And it just shows like what Zillow just happened. I mean, they pulled out from iBuying. Right. And it shows that a computer can't do everything. Right. You can use it for your advantage, but I mean, you can't put square footage price on everything because if it's got a view, if it's been remodeled, if it's in great condition, if it's a crappy build, uh, weird layout, like 4,000 square feet, if it's a weird layout, that's may or may not be as worth as much as a 3,000 square foot home. Yeah. So, and in California, we have like 600 square foot homes. <laughs> so it better be a good layout. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Um, I was talking to, well, I actually just filmed a YouTube about it. You know, why Zillow failed at iBuying. And there are a few reasons. But like, for one, you know, flipping houses at scale is extremely hard. You know, we've been doing it for a while now. And Z- like we might have been doing one percent of what Zillow's doing. I'm just like, oh yeah. How can Zillow think they could just top into it and run their you know core business on top of that? Yep. Just be like, yeah, we're gonna go buy all these houses. We'll fix them up. No big deal. And we'll be able to you know figure out what they're worth and everything. It's just like, yeah, it's it's really hard. You got to find the talent. Like where who's the you person the gonna labor. do the remodel? Yeah, yeah. The labor is tough on this. Construction is one of the hardest parts of house flipping. I say it's probably the hardest part. Um. Because everything else is like, okay, even if you did buy a thousand good deals, you still got to get them fixed up. Yeah. And, uh, okay, they have the money. That's fine. That's easy. But their algorithm misjudged deals too. Yeah. You know, a ton of my students were selling deals to Zillow. And we made a killing because, you know, for one, 
Zillow kind of got stuck with all the bad properties because we would submit every property to Zillow, right? And Zillow submits their offer. It's like, you know, yeah, they offered right on a lot of them, but they're just not really worth it to us. We're like, eh, whatever. But then they offer bad on a few and we're like, yeah, let's take all the bad ones. And then uh, bad meaning good for us. Yeah. <laughs> they overpaid. For sure. I mean, and this is back to the point of like, hey, hats off to them for trying. Like, yeah. you know, I always say to, you know, the people that are trying things, people love pointing at people that are failing and it makes them feel better. Yeah. But also, I mean- I, I mean, I started a t-shirt company. I started a dog collar company. <laughs> I don't know. They all failed. But yeah. like, and you know, I'm sure people were like, oh, you know, you're not getting, you know, it's, it's just another thing that you're doing, Mark. I mean, even my brother told me I'd never make it in real estate. Mm. So now I get to pay for his daughter's tuition for college just because. There you go. <laughs> he's just like, to I'm, rub it in his face. I'm glad you, he's like, I'm glad you made it. Yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep telling you, you can't do something because you're paying for my kids to go to school. So that's fine. Is that the same brother who, uh, told you to get into roller derby? No, no. So that was my, that's my little brother. He's not like my actual brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the one that he was like 10 years old, told me to get into Florida. <laughs> this is my older brother. Yeah. That's my funny, actual dude. blood brother. Yeah. He, uh, told me, cause I think it was just the fact that I always had different jobs and different careers, Yeah, which I got bored a lot. Yeah. I never got fired, but I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> you did just enough. Yes. And he was like, ah, you're just never going to make it. It's too tough. And I'm like, all right, thank you. And I also I, had my, I needed that my first broker during a a big, huge office meeting said, don't ask stupid questions in front of everyone after I asked something. Really? Yeah. He just asked for my business the other day and I said, don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't ask stupid questions. He's like, what's that mean? I was like, don't you remember saying that to me uh, about six years ago when I was a brand new agent? He's like, I have no idea. Yeah, no. So you, you, you hold grudges. Oh, totally. Uh, but a good <laughs> chip on my shoulder is what motivates me. It's not really a grudge. It's more of like a like. I'll remember that. Yeah. Like I talk to my older brother every day. So yeah. I'm cool with them. We get along very well, but I think about that all the time and I'm like, ha ha, you know, I'm, I've made it. Yeah. Um, so it feels good. Yeah. It reminds me of, uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, cause I'm a green Bay Packer or green Bay Packers fan. And Rodgers is always like, he's got this chip on his shoulders. Like, dude, you're like one of the best quarterbacks of all time. You know, like the most talented guy anyone has seen. And he still gets just pissed at like any slight anyone gives him. And it was yep. like, you know, the Packers drafted Jordan Love uh, two years ago. And they're like, oh, you know, this guy's going to replace you. Rodgers just goes and wins the MVP. <laughs> He's like, no. Yeah, not going to happen. Yeah. That's, I love that. Uh, kind of reminds me of the meme that says uh, buyers waiting for the housing market to crash. And it was like a photo of Tom Brady over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty damn good. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love like, it's not a grudge I hold against him. But man, I love when people tell me I can't do something. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. So I want to talk about, you know, team building, because I think that what you've done is uh, really just a result of building a great team. And we talked about some things at lunch about, you know, how you've gone about that and the culture you're cultivating and everything else. But uh, before we do that, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor. Have you ever wanted to invest in real estate, but you didn't have the time to find deals yourself? That's where Fundrise comes in. Fundrise is a crowdfunding platform that has transacted over $5 billion in real estate and has over 150,000 active investors. While many funds, like my own, require accredited investors, Fundrise allows anyone to invest with as little as $500. If you'd like to learn more, check out Fundrise.com. Once again, that's Fundrise.com. Are you looking to find off-market real estate deals? One of the best tools my team uses is Batch Leads. With Batch Leads, you're able to pull data, manage lists, and send text messages. On top of that, you can get nationwide access to the MLS to get pictures and comps. My team has used Batch Leads to get some of our best deals, so I know it works. If you want to start today, you can get half off your first month by going to batchleads.io and using the promo code RYAN. Once again, that's batchleads.io, promo code RYAN for half off your first month. Now, back to the show. So tell me about uh, the team. How big is it right now? Like, how did you grow it to where it's at? Yeah, so it's it's grown pretty organically. We're at 90 agents now. Okay. Um, I was at 15 agents. So we went from 15 to 90 in about a year. And it's been just through growth through mostly social media. So yeah. people and word around, because we tell people we're hiring, we're constantly getting, you know, our vendors, title reps, insurance reps, they're all saying, hey, you know, I've got this agent. He's not doing so well at this brokerage. And we, our avatar, the person who I want to go after is typically, you know, brand new licensed or within their first year. 
Okay. I love if they come from another brokerage so they know how hard it is. Yeah. And then they step into our team and they're like, wow, this is pretty this phenomenal. Is much better. Yeah. So we, we do that. And when you have that many people, you would think I have a, a huge support staff. I actually have four support staff for 90 agents. Yeah. So it's, it's really a well-oiled machine. A lot of tech that we use. We use a program called Cognito Forms. We have Sisu, Follow Up Boss, Ylopo. All these different systems help us to where we don't have to have a ton of admin. Right. Um, and we did a training course on Teachable. So when my agents come on board, the first 30 days, they have to go through 190 modules. Mm. They have to pass each section. They have to do five buyer examples, like five uh, sample offers. They have to do five buyer consults. And they're all kind of like sample ones to my admin team. They have to do 2,000 dials outbound uh, through our leads that we have in our system. And they have to do a uh, in-person exam of 150 questions. They have to do that in their first 30 days. Jeez. If they don't, they're off the team. You guys don't mess around. No, you got to keep them accountable. You know, you keep those and we do that exact same thing. After they finish that, then they get introduced to a mentor. And a mentor on our team is someone who's, you know, they live and breathe kind of my porch light way. My team's called porch light. And uh, they're someone who I would want to train me. I make them the mentors right. and they help them through their first five deals. That's crazy, man. That is a very rigorous. I don't know that I've heard of anyone having that amount of Dude, you better do this in 30 days or you're out, dude. Yeah, you can have a copy of my university. I, I want to see it. I'll give your team access to uh, the, the, the module. Yeah, dude. It's good. Yeah, I'd love it. Some of the questions on there, I'm like, I don't know if I'd pass the final anymore. Dude, <laughs> yeah, there's no way I'd pass. <laughs> I know. I'm like, wait, how many days? Well, everything always changes so much, which is what I love about real estate. But yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So you went from 15 to 90. I mean, like, this is pretty recent. Yes. Yeah. Like, did, was that the plan? Did you make a push for it? It just happened? No, you know, you have those people in your life that kind of impact you and you just always remember someone who says something specific. And this guy said, hey, I've been following you on social media. I was at a conference and he walked up and he was like, I, I follow you. Love what you're doing. You're thinking too small. Mm. And then he kind of just talked me through it and he gave me the numbers and he's like, well, let's get you 200 agents on your team within, you know, two years. Right. And so now I'm at 90. My goal is to have 200 by June. And I've got a recruiter, just brought him on today, actually. Nice. Uh, interviewed him in Vegas. And then I've got a sales trainer that's coming over from a, a well-known brokerage, and he's just been training agents for the last 10 years. Wow. So he's going to help the agents for their first year. And we're going to grow. And I bought a building, got a good, nice office in San Diego. Nice. So it's a good culture, and we, we hire to culture. Um, you know, we do the interview based off of, like, would we hang out with this person? Right. And, and if they can't make it through the first 30 days, that shows us that they have grit. We don't know if they have grit through the interview. And real no. estate is freaking tough. We right. all know it's not an easy job. So we get them on that, and and it's been working. Yeah. So you're just going to basically put them through hell week, hell month. Hell month, yeah. Yep. One kid did finish it in a week. <laughs> oh, geez. Is that kid a savage? Dude, he's like, he's, he's like 18. Uh, his wife is uh, still in Europe, and he's like, I need to make enough money to move my wife here. They're a very young couple. This dude's 18, married. Married, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I'm getting my wife to America, and they he immigrated here, and he's like, he, he's kicking butt. And he's just like that positive mindset, kills it, uh, finished the onboarding in one week. That's awesome. Yeah, and he's killing it too, so it's it's good. But yeah, it's yeah. kind of hell week or hell month. Uh, and then they got to pass the exam. They yeah. get a mentor. Yeah, that's I, I love it. I love it. So how did you develop – like all these systems and processes to, you know, onboard this many agents. Like, I'm, I'm sure it was just like organically over time. Or did you have somebody who was like, hey, you should do this? Like, how did it happen? Yeah, I actually thought of it. I was like, man, a lot of people, if you're opening up a business and you're the CEO or the, you know, the head honcho and you're getting all these questions all the time, right? That digs into your day. Right. So I was like, man, I don't have a minute. When people come up and say, do you have a minute? I'm like, nope. Nope. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. So I figured, how can I get every single time they ask me a question, I would open up Zoom, I would hit record, and I'd have them ask me the question, and I'd record it. Yeah. And then I would answer it. Right. And then I would have a virtual assistant go and type that up into a, like, well, if this, then that kind of thing, module. I had it all on Google Drive. And I was like, man, I got to take this into maybe a course. I was right. like, I know all these people have all these courses. I think I could take this. And it's not something I, I was selling to my agents. It was a course that was free to my agents, but they had to go through it. Right. So it was just a university I created online, and I called it Portslight University. <laughs> and I constantly am changing it because, I mean, the new contract for California comes out in maybe two weeks. And okay. so I got to revise the videos for that. Right. But now I have people that do it. So I empower the mentors on my team 
to go and make sure that they're in there. And we got agent spotlights in there. So when a new agent comes on, they actually get to meet all the new, like all the top agents on the team mm. through video. Okay. So it's pretty cool is then they get to meet them in the office. They're like, oh, you're Sam or you're Josh or you're Ali. I saw your video. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. That is cool. I had a girl at a picnic, all company picnic in June. And she comes up to me. She's like, how long have you been on the team? I'm like, well, since I started it. She's like, oh, you're the guy from the videos. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a pretty proud moment. I'm yeah. like, man, I've created a corporation. Yeah. I, you know, I own the team, right? Yeah, I'm like, I started the team. You're fired. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I don't fire anyone. I let them, I'm always say coach up or coach out. Yeah. And usually they let themselves go. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I, I agree with that. It's like, dude, if you set proper expectations on what it is you're to do, if you don't do it, it's just like, dude, I didn't fire you. Yeah. You just didn't do it. Yeah. I gamify everything. We have a game for each or every other month and we set a minimum number of points they have to get. So it's pretty fun is like a call or a nurture or a conversation will be worth different points. And so I say, hey, you got to have 21 points a day. Uh, and Google reviews are on there. Zillow reviews are on there and they get points for each one. Mm. So that's how we're able to, we're almost at a thousand Zillow reviews, uh, 500 Google reviews. That's and that exciting. matters because the people are like, hey, come by my house, come yeah. list it or come buy it, whatever you want. Right. So it's, it's pretty sweet and those reviews work, but gamifying your month and we do it every other month because we don't want to just be like constant on them. Yeah. We don't want to burn them out. We try to make it fun. And right. if you get a certain number of points, you'll get maybe like a dinner party at my house, mm. um, pizza party for the classroom. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were telling me too, you're about to take them all to Mexico and stuff. Yeah, actually they're taking me to Tulum. Uh, oh. So they, I got a random email and they're like, oh, we're going to Tulum. We bought you a flight. I'm like, Perfect. So like my, we call them the OGs, my original agents. Uh -huh. They booked a flight to Tulum, nothing work related, but it's all work friends. Right. And then they, uh, my other group were going down to Valle, which is the uh, winery area mm -hmm. near TJ and that they won the contest. So it's if they, if they did a certain amount of points, they won a trip to Valle mm. and it was, uh, it was unlimited. It wasn't like, Hey, the first one there. Cause you want to, if you're going to have your agents do this, or you're going to have any team members do this, you want to make sure that multiple people can win. Cause when one person wins, then everyone stops. Yeah. What's so the point? you want everyone to be able to achieve that. And so we have a set minimum. If you don't do this, Hey, you're going to have a talking to We had some issues. I mean, some people with COVID and other things, one girl got COVID and she's like, you know, I'm not gonna be able to make my calls that much. And we're like, Hey, you know what? Divide it by two, take your time off. And then if you're good in two weeks, when you're ready to go, just finish half the amount of points. Right, right, right. So we're reasonable. We're not like, Oh, you have to do this. We have a lot of uh, single moms. So we let them work at home. We're very flexible. Yeah. You just got to work for other people's lives and like be that company that is a spot for really everyone. cares about their employees and hundred percent. You know, I'll tell you too, uh, you had mentioned like your turnover is so low, right? I think you said once they join like 96% or something stay. Yes. Yeah. And for us, it's very similar, man. It's like, man, in my businesses, people do not leave. Like I don't, I can count on one hand how many people like have left. Now we've fired people. Yeah, that's different. But as far as like people choosing to leave because, you know, they were unhappy or there was a better opportunity, that just doesn't really happen. And it's just because of things like you mentioned, empowering people to take ownership, leadership and, you know, not be breathing down their necks, you yes. know, obviously incentivizing them with their compensation, with games, with other things to make them perform at a high level. And obviously they're living great lives based on what you're doing. Um, and then three, just like opportunity to consistently improve. Like that's my yeah. one thing is like, I want everyone to, you know, realize there's more levels to this, right? Like if we're able to, I will always put the resources for us to go buy more homes. I'll put the resources for us to, do more content to do whatever. Like I'm down for whatever. Yeah. Like if you guys need a tool, I'll buy the tool. You yep. know, as long as I got the right people swinging the tools. Yeah. I'm the same way. I, we were sitting around the office the other day and it's funny cause, uh, it's now beyond me. It's funny. The corporation I've created is like, it's going to live on beyond me. Right. My, my family, my niece and nephew are probably going to inherit it. Uh, it, and it's just this, it's a, it's become so big, but we're all sitting around and one of the people on the team goes, are we all just going to be on this team until we're 80? <laughs> like, are we never going to leave? And I was like, shit, if you're selling homes when you're 80, you did something wrong. Right. I want you to retire. Yeah. So we focus a lot on finances. If you buy a new car when you're on our team, we make fun of you. <laughs> so our rule is you got to be a landlord before you own a Land Rover. Uh, <laughs> so we got these things in place because a lot of things like money is taboo to talk about. Yeah. We have financial Fridays. All we talk about is money from 830 to nine o'clock, all money questions. 
credit scores, how to not get in credit card debt, how to pay off credit card debt, how to pay student loans off. And my agents, if they've been on my team over a year, 100% debt free and their credit score has gone up, I guarantee probably at least 50 points if you've been on my team for a year. Right. And it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, some of these girls are one of the girls I have on my team. She was living in a garage when she joined my team. She had left her husband living in the garage. I didn't know that during the interview. She obviously wasn't leading with that. Right. Badass agent. And she's looking at a $1.2 million house right now. It's crazy. Three years later. It's crazy. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's fun. I, I like, I feel like I'm their parent. <laughs> and they're my only friends, so it's great to see them succeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing I have for is I, at least I hire cool people. Yeah, it's funny, man. That that's just kind of what happens when you have a good work environment. Like I'm friends with all the people, you know, in the office, and we all hang out, and um, it just it just happens to be that way when you really like what you do. Yeah, right? everyone's winning together. You know, it's not just oh man, only Mark wins. You know, it's like, no, everyone's winning. Yeah, my team is winning. Like, yeah. there, there's some people that are making, uh, I got, I, I don't probably at least 10 that will make $500,000 or more. It's crazy. Take home. Yeah. Well, before taxes. Yeah. <laughs> well, if they can buy enough real estate, yes. they can change that. So you, you brought up a good point, right? You wanted to be a landlord before buying a Land Rover. I like that. I'm going to start saying that. So uh, with that, tell me about, like, the real estate investing side because you get all these realtors who – sell homes their whole career, never buy. <laughs> just, yes. That, every time I've ever seen that, I'm just like, this doesn't like really make sense. Oh, yeah. Back to my <laughs> first broker that yelled at me. I was like, what, where do you live? And he's like, oh, I live in this building. I was like, isn't that apartments? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I go, well, where's your house? And he's like, oh, I don't own any real estate. I was like, oh, red flag. <laughs> yeah. Like, this doesn't seem like the right broker to work for. Right. Uh, no, we're always talking about, we want, I want my agents to buy basically a property or a year. Yeah. So obviously, first year in the business, can't buy one. I mean, you could. Your loan's just going to be funky. So yeah. we wait for a kind of a conventional loan. They get their primary. I try to get them to get a multiplex or something, maybe with an FHA loan, 3.5% down. They run out the other side on Airbnb. Yeah. It covers the whole thing. Right. Then after a year, they refinance, remodel it, pull equity out, buy the next place, same thing. Do owner-occupied, move into that it. one, turn the other one into a rental. Yeah. And they're just doing this over and over. And now that I have my team now for five years – I'm seeing it play out because right. it's a long enough time. Yeah, you've got a big horizon to see these guys who are actually executing it. Oh, yeah. I had an agent the other day, Joe. He's my sales trainer. He did a, a flip, and he made 300 grand. It's crazy. In friggin' 60 days. <laughs> yeah. He just that was his walk deal. away. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. I love those. Uh, you know, people get scared about flipping these uh, high-priced homes in San Diego and Cali and other spots. And they're like, man, it's so risky. I'm like, yeah, but... Man, these dudes make bank when it hits. Let me oh, tell yeah. you. A lot more than what he made at Cheesecake Factory where he was working when he started. <laughs> <laughs> he was a waiter at Cheesecake Factory. Dude, I can't tell you how many, um, especially here in Vegas, it's very common, how many waiters and bartenders that are realtors. Oh, I love bartenders. They're yeah. the best. They're the best agents. I also got uh, another one if you're looking to recruit agents is Costco Membership Services. Mm. They, they get a dollar per membership, I think, uh -huh. and they're great employees, and they move over and they uh, start working in real estate. Man, dude, working at Costco to make a dollar per signing. Like, what's the incentive to even doing it? Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. I, I made a dollar, whoop de doo Yep. But, yeah, they come over to real estate. They got great customer service. They're personable, you know. Yeah. And Costco's a great company, so I love hiring their employees. What keep, about Keep training them, Costco. <laughs> what do you think about car sales, guys? You know, I don't know about that. I haven't had anyone. I've had one agent, and he actually quit and went back to car sales. Yeah. I think that they're so used to people just walking on the lot. They and don't have to prospect. They don't have to prospect. Yeah. So that's the difference is like, it's, it's a little different. You, you're used to like, that's the same thing like Nordstrom employees, fantastic company. They're amazing employees, but they're used to people just walking Better in the door. Better not to go hunt. Yeah. They yeah. build the relationships with someone, but if it wasn't given them to start, I find that they, they don't have it. How Which, do you, I don't uh, know, bartenders, they don't hunt, but for some reason, I think they're just used to working long hours, making a hundred to 300 bucks a shift. And yeah, they're, they just, ain't, they ain't they're just a, over it. Yeah. They ain't in a comfy location. Like, yeah. you know, ACE and just like they're behind the scenes just working and running around and schmoozing people and whatever. Yep. What are you doing? I mean, speaking of that, right? Like you have the team. And so I'm sure there are people that expect like, hey, if I'm on the team, then I should be given leads. You know, the same thing we're talking about. Like, how do you handle that? Yeah. So we, we tier everyone off. Um, so the top 25% are called mastery. Next is uh, elite. Then we go down and we have foundation and we have, or we have core and then foundation. So depending on where you're at in the tiers, you get different levels and you get different rewards. 
So we really focus on that and you get different types of leads. So we have a Zillow Flex team. That's the best of the best. You're only on that team if you've proven yourself. Yep. Uh, when you're brand new and you go through the university, you make 2,000 dials. You're calling all the old Zillow leads and Realtor.com leads. Right. And we used to call it the dead pond, dead lead pond. <laughs> we now renamed it to the money pond. Many, uh, probably about three years ago, I renamed it. But now the cons, you know, it's just the idea of like how you frame your mindset. Yeah. Dude, agents pull listings out of there and buy sides all the time. Yeah. So the good ones that start out on my team that are hustlers, I got a girl that got licensed in February. And she's on our Zillow Flex team. She's proven herself, so that's why we give it to her. She's already sold $19 million, mm. and it's November right now. So yeah. she's on that team. We hand out, we got Realtor.com leads. We have Veterans United, which is a military lead source. San Diego, we have five bases. Yeah, yeah. So big military town. And we really focus on kind of these teams within the team. Right. It's all one team, but we, f we break it off that way. Okay. And you kind of get an introduction to that team, and you kind of try out, and we monitor everything you're doing. And then you you can keep those leads. So obviously you're providing just different tiers of leads for depending on their skill level. But uh, are they doing any type of marketing for themselves? Not really. No. We let them do open houses. We let them market themselves, but it has to be branded our team name. Right. But really the amount of money it costs to market for themselves, we let them do social media and YouTube. Yeah. Um, but print marketing is so expensive. Yeah. So we, we try to have them focus more social media, especially with their sphere of influence, past clients. It's a great way. We do a happy hour every quarter. Yeah. So we're constantly posting stuff online, inviting past clients, inviting potential clients, and that gets them in the door. And gets more referrals them. going. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of the military refers a ton. So. Oh, yeah. Thanks to our badass military members. I, like, yeah. hats off, like we've sold 200 homes uh, to VA buyers this year. Wow. In a market that's tough. So we are that competitive. Our agents are good. We're getting our offers accepted. But it goes back to the point, we perform. We have the expectation with our agents in our market, not on our team. They know if a porch light agent's going to write an offer, it's going to be one that closes. Right. So it's kind of like setting that up, and we've set this reputation, and it's it's allowed yeah. us to win. Yeah, we're not writing BS offers, that, no. you know, just to try and lock it up. Exactly. But zero down and closing costs, and you're negotiating against a cash offer, it's like <laughs> <laughs> same price. Yeah. You're like, please accept my offer. You know, a lot of times it doesn't get accepted, but we future pace that buyer. Right. Hey, it's going to be probably 10 offers. Yeah. It's going to be a minute. Yep. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So, I mean, what's the future hold, man? I mean, I know you want to get to 200 agents. Um, I know that, you know, obviously you're, you're already the biggest team in SoCal. My goal, my guess is you probably want to be the biggest team nationwide. Yeah. I mean, I look at the big guys, like, is it uh David Spain? He's in Atlanta. I think he's got teams everywhere. We got uh Chris Waters and Bradley pounds in Austin. They're selling 5,000 houses. DJ and Lindsay are in St. Augustine and Jacksonville. They've sold 3000 homes this year. So I always was told, Hey, it's different market. San Diego's different. I'm like, bullshit. I'm going to do it. So yeah. I just need the manpower to do it. Yes, our GCI is equivalent to a lot of those people, but I look at it as units. I mean, when we're doing ancillary businesses where we have insurance, lending, you know, all of that on one, uh, home warranty, it's units. Yeah. Units matter. Um, our volume is is not as high as some of the teams in San Diego because there's the ultra luxury market. We're kind of that military yeah. 620000 is our average price, which in San Diego, that's not very much. Um, right, right. So there are teams that have more volume, but units-wise, we're – we're crushing it. We're, right. we're going to do probably around eight, right around a little bit over eight. Right. So looking at, uh, you know, I, being in the influencer side, I'm not like super into what's going on in the realtor space um, with that. I, I look at the investing side, but like influencers I pay attention to on the realtor side would be like Ryan Serhant and Josh Altman and, and these guys. Like, what are they doing that's different than other people? Like, are they just... They have a Bravo show. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know that. But <laughs> that's like that's all they're doing. No. <laughs> they're cause what is Sir Saron's gonna sell like over a billion this year. Yeah. So he he'll doing? he did seven hundred million, I think, last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he'll hit a billion. So I'll hit five hundred and something million this year. Right. I, I think I can catch him. Yeah. My buddy Tyler Whitman's on a uh, million dollar listing in New York with Ryan. Okay. And he's one of Ryan's competitors. Well, from on the TV show apparently. Right, right. Never seen it, but good show apparently. Uh and uh, he freaking his business, him and I were tied a couple years ago. His episode started airing and his business was just like <laughs> woof, big leaps. And I'm like, I'm never going to catch this kid. Yeah. So the TV thing is a, is a, uh, it's an option. I mean, I'm open to it. I get pitched quite a bit on different options, but it has to be the right thing. I'm not just going to do it to do it. Right. Um, I've probably had about 10 TV shows pitched to me right. for San Diego. 
But also, it's like, who the heck wants to watch me? <laughs> <So> <laughs> I know I would never want to watch me, but heck, if you, uh, you find it entertaining and you can learn something, and that's my thing is like, I want to be able to be the person who can teach someone something. Right, not drama. Yes, no, I'm not that way at all. Like, if you were that way, one guy in my office was rude to one of my admin, an agent on my team. I fired him on the spot. I said, no one treats anyone like that, especially in front of me and especially at my company. Right. So I wouldn't have any drama. Maybe that would be the drama. I just get to fire a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need you to... uh be disrespectful. Or I could do more flips. Yeah. Yeah. Flips are fun. Yeah. Yeah. We do we do some flips here and there, but it's not our primary, but we do have it occasionally. Right. And you just bought the uh what is it, twenty thousand square foot building? No, I bought I bought two buildings, but uh one building is five thousand. And then the other one is a house that's getting demoed and we're actually going to build up. We're gonna build a hundred unit apartment uh, apartment and hotel complex. And then I'll have twenty two thousand square feet from my team. So I'll in have that in there, complex. In the complex on the first two levels. How big is the whole complex? Uh, it's going to be 10 floors, so uh, like 100,000 square feet, maybe a little bit more. How are you going to finance that thing, dude? Dude, I don't know. I'm, I, I got <laughs> smart friends. <laughs> You're just like, I, I just found the real estate. It looks good. Like, I'll figure it out later. Yeah, well, I, yeah, exactly. Like, what happened was I was at lunch, and this is, you know, surround yourself with good people. Like, I was talking to these two guys, and they, they own a mortgage company. They own a bank. Yeah. So, and I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I found out I could develop up and I'm remodeling my building now. And they go, okay, wait, wait, you're remodeling it now for what? And I was like, well, I'm going to put in, you know, my office there. And he goes, well, when are we going to develop up? And I was like, I don't know what to do with that. And he's like, well, I do. Yeah. So they're financing it. They're coming in as partners. Okay. So now I have uh, three partners on it and it's going to cost 23 million to develop. Okay. And we'll have a hundred units. Mm. So, and Airbnb is getting a lot of regulations in San Diego. So we're going to do it. It's zoned hotel. Yeah. So we're going to do kind of an Airbnb hotel mm. right in the middle of a hip neighborhood, tons of breweries around, walking distance to everything. Yeah. It's in a natural uh, grocery store market, kind of farmer's market kind of style. Yeah. Like a mini Whole Foods is right there. Mm. So it's exciting. We opened up, we did a temporary remodel on it because rent was so expensive. I figured, hey, I could throw in a hundred grand into this remodel, build it out looking this is nice. This 5,000 square foot building. Yep. Yeah. Build it out nice while we're waiting for the permits. Yep. Once the permits come, then we're going to demo the whole building. And a lot of the stuff that we put into this office space, we can actually take out and use in our flips. So wait, explain it to me. You're going to, there's two separate buildings. Yep. The 5,000 one, which you're moving into. Yep. And we're already in there. And you're already in there. And then you're taking this other building and you're going to demo the whole thing. We're demoing both once we get permits. You're going to demo both. Where's your team yeah. going to go? We're going to buy another building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's next year. All right. All which right. Is, I, was I was trying to understand. I was like, wait, I thought you were just demoing one. So well, if you look at it, you're man, just doing a light remodel just to pass time. To yeah, and it look good. Yeah, yeah, and it looks amazing. I got these two designers in there. The yeah. friggin', they killed it. And so we did it on a budget. Yeah. And uh, we now have 90 agents in there. Yeah. So. Well, you know, if you need more funds, I might be interested. Definitely. Sounds like a cool project. I would love to do it. Yeah, and we got some good, we got a good crew. Like, it's, yeah. a, it's a cool group. Everyone's very chill. Yeah. Yeah, so they're awesome guys. Well, that's cool, man. Well, Dude, it's been a blast having you on the show, man. I appreciate you coming out from San Diego. And, uh, you know, it's it's it inspires me. Like, man, maybe I should uh, step my brokerage game up and think about some new possibilities. So, like you said before, you know, just get around inspirational people because yep. they're going to make you level up and see what's possible. I'm like, this is a normal guy. You know, he's, he's building a hotel. He's, uh, <laughs> you know, leading San Diego. And like you said, it's not like, you know, you're on Bravo. You're not on these things doing crazy it's just like dude you're just executing very normal things but doing it on a daily basis yeah and if it seems super <laughs> far from where the person is right now in their life like yeah. just remember little by little yeah and if you keep progressing it's going to be there faster than you think way faster i can attest to that yeah you're like five years man it's a long time but you look back that goes by like that yeah no 100 percent. it's a lot of working hours in those five years <laughs> There's a, and a lot of thinking too, a lot yes. of brain damage, but it's worth it. hundred percent. Yeah. I would not give up my life that I have now. I'm super grateful. Yeah. Uh, I created it, but I'm, I can't say enough to like my parents, my family, like everyone it's, it's, a, and my crew, like my, my team. Yeah. No. They're, they're my, they're my work family. I hear you, dude. I hear you. Well guys, um, make sure you go follow Mark on social media. We'll link to all this stuff down below. And uh, if you got value out of this episode, definitely leave a five-star review. Make sure you guys, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. And uh, Mark, thanks again, man. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching the Ryan Pineda Show. If you want to work with me, head over to ryanpineda.com. You can find my courses, coaching programs, and upcoming events. We also have free resources you can download. So head over to ryanpineda.com.